two black holes crash into each other four billion light years away, creating ripples that prove that Einstein and Hawking were absolutely correct all along. The $1.1 billion LIGO detector captured the cosmic collision in an unprecedented detail, validating theories that seemed impossible when first proposed. Now, we witness the moment science fiction becomes science fact. Take a look. Two invisible monsters, each 32 times heavier than our sun, spinning around each other at unimaginable speeds before smashing together in the ultimate cosmic car crash. The collision happened four billion years ago, but the shockwaves only just reached Earth. And they've proven two of history's greatest minds were spot on. Albert Einstein predicted these ripples in space-time over a century ago. Hawking said black hole surfaces can never shrink, only grow. Both seemed like wild fairies back then. Today, we have proof. My name is Chad Hanna and I am a professor of physics at Penn State. Einstein predicted um, that gravity was actually the consequence of massive objects bending space and time. When he first calculated this prediction, uh, he realized that this effect was going to be extremely small and almost impossible to measure. And it took scientists literally a hundred years between Einstein's first prediction and the LIGO discovery to pull together the technology, the theory, the methods to be able to prove his prediction correct. The $1.1 billion LIGO detector, a pair of L-shaped tunnels stretching four kilometers each, felt the universe literally stretch and squeeze by less than one ten thousandth the width of a single proton. That's like measuring the distance from Earth to the nearest star to within the thickness of human hair. When those two black holes merged, they created something spectacular. A monster black hole with the mass of 63 suns spinning at 100 revolutions per second. Its event horizon, the point of no return, covers 400,000 square kilometers, roughly the size of Japan. LIGO, with its ultra-fine lasers and kilometers long arms, did the heavy lifting. It caught the signal more clearly than ever. It measured the faint ring down, the final shakeout, as the new black hole settled and saw that the laws laid out decades ago apply. Bureau Report, we are World is One. And shifting our focus to India now, the country's leader of opposition, Rahul Gandhi, is under fire for his security protocol breaches. The BJP has now issued a strong message to the Congress after the CRPF warned that Rahul Gandhi was violating security protocols and that is during his foreign travels. Senior BJP leader Anurag Thakur said that the issue must be taken very seriously by Congress President Malikarjun Kharge. He warned that security lapses involving the former Congress President Rahul Gandhi could have dire consequences. The remarks came a day after the CRPF's BBIP security chief wrote to Gandhi and copied the letter to Kharge as well, accusing Rahul Gandhi of not taking his Z plus security cover seriously. The letter highlighted multiple foreign trips made without prior intimation, including visits to Italy, Vietnam, Dubai, Qatar, London and even Malaysia. The CRPF said that this violates the yellow book guidelines that govern advanced security liaison procedures under Z plus security, that is, a VIP's destination is supposed to be secured in advance with reconnaissance teams deployed to ensure that there are no gaps. So this is not the first time that security forces have flagged concerns 
2022, the CRPF reported that Rahul Gandhi had violated protocols more than 100 times since 2020. That's also including the Delhi leg of his Bharat Jodo Yatra. Just last month in Bihar, a security scare erupted when a man suddenly hugged and kissed Gandhi during a motorbike rally, forcing security personnel to intervene. Anurag Thakur said that the Congress president should now direct his leader to avoid breaches and ensure that the CRPF is not forced to issue more warnings. All right, South Sudan is once again facing a political crisis that could threaten its fragile peace. The nation's vice president, Rake Mashar, has been formally charged with murder, treason and crimes against humanity. The charges are in connection with deadly attacks earlier this year. Mashar is accused of directing violence in the northeastern town of Nasir. These attacks were carried out by the White Army, which is an ethnic militia group allegedly aligned with Mashar's faction. Evidence further suggests, actually reveals, that the White Army operated under the command and influence of certain leaders of the Sudan's People Liberation Movement struck army in opposition, SPLMAIO, including Dr. Yaak Mashar Ten, through a coordinated military and political structures. So based on evidence, the following charges were prepared under South Sudan laws and applicable international laws. One, murder. This is according to the Section 206 Penal Court Act 2008, in particular the killing of Major General Devin Major, 250 SSPD soldiers and the UN personnel. Mashar has been under house arrest since March. 20 others have also been indicted, including the country's former petroleum minister. But Global powers are voicing alarm. They say detaining Mashar threatens the 2018 peace deal that ended a brutal civil war which claimed 400,000 lives. Civil society leaders in South Sudan are calling for a fair trial and not a political show trial. They warn that how this case is handled could actually assess whether the nation steps towards justice or slides back into war. Now, South Sudan continues to suffer from internal political rivalries, conflict, displacement, and under provision of essential services. In 2019, actor George Clooney called for action against multinationals, Western tycoons, and brokers who profited from South Sudan's instability. Back then, that's in 2019 we're talking about, the actor warned the policymakers that if you don't care what happens in South Sudan and its problems, that it will end on your doorsteps. That was the warning made by Clooney. And tonight, when the people of Sudan are rising up, the Western stars and the human rights industry that fought for this are absent. They're nowhere to be seen. And we ask, where are George Clooney and the company when Sudan needs them the most.